Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gay Gerard. I'm your host today and I have got an incredible guest with us here today. Her name is Tony Jessup and she's a health and fitness and lifestyle coach from Phuket in Thailand. Tony, welcome to the channel. Great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you. So let's start right back to the beginning. I'd love to hear about your childhood and growing up. Whereabouts did you grow up in the UK and sort of what was your diet and lifestyle like? Oh, when I look back, it was so like food wise, I look back, uh, full of sweets and candy. I was brought up in a little city called Hull in the northeast of England. So I have the Yorkshire accent. Yes. I... <laughs> I'm hoping that I dilute by now, but it hasn't. And yeah, my family, my parents were together up until I was 19. We weren't, you know, we didn't have a lot of things. We had a, a fairly, say fairly balanced upbringing. Um, but when I look back, there was a lot of binge eating with my mother, dieting. We did, definitely, my mum was overweight at one point and she was always struggling to lose weight. So she went on every single diet. And then my dad worked at a cake factory. So he was always bringing in cake. So. I was always quite active and very slim and um, really skinny, but I'd always eat sweet up till probably late teen, or maybe uh, 15, 16. And then I started to put some weight on and then and realized, you know, food, well, I didn't, I, I felt like this food's not, is, is making me put on weight. So then I would revert to eating less. And then I got into the gym because I wanted to make, you know, be able to lose weight and feel good, but still eat sometimes rubbish. So yeah, so that journey took on a life of its own. That's when I got into health and fitness, but I was so conditioned into the, the fitness industry with the meat and the dairy, you know, having that on every single meal. I, that's all I knew for many years. It's what we've been um, trained to believe that we need protein in the diet. But you know, childhood was pretty, yeah, we, you know, it was good. We just had some bad habits and fried foods, you know, the traditions, you know, the fish and chips on a Friday, mm -hmm. uh, kebabs when I used to go out drinking every weekend. It was just a load of junk food. Yeah, right. it, was, it was, when I look back, it was, my mum was encouraging more vegetables, but pretty much every day we would eat sweet. They limited it at some point, I believe, in my childhood because I my mum would say, you, you can't have it all day, you can have it on it, but every day, it was always in an evening. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I look back, now no one I've got like these, these sweet cravings and just sugar, sugar and fat together, yeah. And then, yeah, I ended up getting into the health and fitness and restriction and binge eating. I couldn't get away from the addictions of food, you know, I was, if, if any sort of trigger, any stressful situation, I would use food as my comfort and that's right. I look back now how deeply, you know, I wonder why my issue, where my issues came from. And mm -hmm. this is what I, I share with the world about my struggles with food and the food addiction and how, it, how it all came about, you know, from a lot of it's from childhood, a lot of childhood have a trauma or what you've witnessed, you know, my family, especially my mother in and out of diets, weight watchers, slimming world. I used to go to them all then I'd be on them, I'd experiment. Oh my gosh, you know, it takes over your life. You know, you it realize does. like, that's why, because I, I was in the health and fitness and I was doing a little bit of modeling at the time. So that's when I got heavily into the restriction. And um, were you, did you say you were 13 at this point? Well, I went into health and fitness in about six, well, I left school and then did a bit of, I left, I went in the Royal Air Force and then came oh, out wow. and that's when I went into okay. I was a few years in the Royal Air Force and then I went to into the health and fitness. Right. So I really enjoyed the fitness side in the Royal Air Force and then and what were you doing yeah, there? I was a steward. I was on I was supposed to go on to doing the planes. Okay. So assisting with the planes, but ended up just being based in Warrington and they was gonna send me off to Northern Ireland and I didn't oh, want to go. Yeah, right. But I also yeah. felt I liked the, the the only reason why I joined, I wanted to travel. I wanted to travel the world and um, I always had that desire to, when I was 16, I was like, because where I was from, such a small city, I felt very trapped. I didn't, I couldn't articulate it at the time, but I felt very stuck and I was like, I need to get out. I need to explore, but I didn't know how. And my brother had gone in the army and, and then he suggested, well, why don't you choose the, uh, one of the, you know, the RAF because you can travel then. Because I thought, I don't want to do the Navy. I'm not really the sea girl. <laughs> 
And then I didn't want to do the army. And I thought, oh, no, no, no. I had no clue. I was just like, oh, I can travel and go in. Amazing. It was experience. It was a brilliant idea. That, it, it, it taught me a lot of organization and being, I mean, my mum was very organized and clean anyways, but, um, uh, and the, but that is where it really cemented the fitness. I really enjoyed the fitness side of it when I was in the, the force. At what point did you sort of start to hear about like vegan food and that sort of where did food and the acknowledgement that, you know, you could eat a different diet or there was different types of diets other than the ones that, you, you know, you experienced at home with the dieting with your mum. Yeah. At what point did you hear about being vegan or raw vegan? I, I think veganism 13 years ago. I maybe would have heard about it, but never really understood it. And it was not until I was in Thailand. So 13 years ago, I, I, I first came to Thailand and I spent a couple of weeks traveling. And it was the second time I came the year after. Right. Uh, 12, that, actually, no, it was 14 years ago when I first came to Thailand. And 13 years ago is when, at the second time when I met, I was volunteering at a, a sanctuary, a dog sanctuary. Okay. And I'd met this awesome guy who's a fruitarian wow. and he was sat around the table. We was all eating our rice and chicken and with, we were all talking about the dog meat trade and how horrific it is. Mm -hmm. And I was like shocked in that that goes on. That was the first time I'd ever heard about the dog meat trade. And he straight out came out with, he said, well, you're eating chicken, you're eating cows, no difference, they're eating dogs. And I was like, oh. Oh, and then but I was curious, everyone else was just like, but it's different that these are dogs, these are companions. And, you know, they're, they've got so and I thought, Oh, this is interesting. And that's what opened my eyes thinking, Oh, there's a because he said there is no difference. So mm -hmm. I was I, I ended, we'd ended up being close friends. And I was asking him a lot about i I'm, I'm always being quite curious why certain individuals do certain things. And mm -hmm. I think traveling from traveling quite early, I've seen different lifestyles over the world and how people are living. It's not just that one that you used or you've been born into, mm. you know, and I look back now, I was like, I just didn't suit that. I am a tropics girl. You know, I look back now, I'm like, I don't like the cold. 10 months of the year in England, it's freezing. Yeah. So yeah, I was just like, fruitarian, can you survive off that? Can you live? How, so you, you just bypass vegan and raw vegan. You met somebody well, straight away that was like, fruitarian. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, it was the first time I'd just come across, yes, a fruitarian first, but he said he'd been vegan, okay. but I wasn't interested in eating that. Well, I say I was, but mm. I couldn't. I was, so fix, I, I was still fixated on you need protein and animal protein because I was in the health industry. You know, I did a lot of weights. I was thinking you need animals to, uh, you need uh, meat, you know, so. I, I was just curious to see how good he looks. He was an older guy and I thought, wow, you're healthy. Mm -hmm. You're looking strong. And he, the biggest thing he said to me he says, I'm an animal lover and I don't want to eat animals. And then we just started talking about this whole, yeah, why are you eating one? And it really cemented that vegan path because I went away and started to look at the vegan diet. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started pretty much in that year I started to eat. To, to be on the vegan diet right and then i went to university and studied animal science and because I, I was looking at being a vet or looking at legislation protection for animals but i was also so my two passions are health and wellness and and, and animals and, and wow. speaking up for animals and then i was doing some university talks as well i was doing quite a few talks in england speaking about veganism wow. and so i was becoming an activist all that just that's incredible to, yeah the passion really started with the ethics behind it Right. I knew it was healthy, but I started to, I was eating the mock meats. So I didn't quite connect the health side. Oh, I think I thought that I was eating healthier. And then just through exploring, traveling, meeting individuals and him sharing, because I've become quite close. I kept coming back and forth from England to Thailand, mm -hmm. meeting with my friend. He ended up living out here long term. That was his wow. first year out and he stayed, he's been here since. And he's educating me on the lifestyle. He's very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. and sending me books, people to you know to to expand my knowledge. And and then I was like, I like the idea of, of raw, uh, but I don't know if I want it. And then it was Freely who suggested the um, the raw until dinner, raw till four. I said like, right. that'll, that'll suit me. That seems that's good because then I can have my cooked meal at night, and especially in the colder climate. It was easy, I would say I'd do more raw days when I was out in Thailand eating abundance of fruit, but when I'd go back, I would struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, but the more raw days I was having, 
when I was in Thailand and I was having more raw, more fruit, I was feeling better. And it's just been a natural progression the, the you know, delving deeper into how you can thrive, not just be, you know, this, uh, this, this just, when you get to this next level, it's like, how can this even be possible? You know, the energy I have, the clarity I have, the mm. balance, how balanced I am, my, my periods, my menstrual cycle is wow. more balanced. You know, yeah. less, like I used to struggle uh, for like six days, eight days, heavy periods, cramps, mm. emotional, up and down, self worth would really drop. Like I, I would have this, I didn't realize at first how bad it was until one of my exes said, This is, you're not normally like this for the two or three weeks of the month. It, this seems to be hormonal. And I, I never put the two and two together. And this was 13 years ago as well. Wow. Yeah. And that was when I started to look at, deeper into just my lifestyle like i stopped the drinking 13 years ago lots of things have started to spiral and and say the raw foods and they're just the cleaner i was eating the better i was feeling my mm -hmm. periods are like one to two days no cramps balanced hormones that i don't have that where i used to always feel like i had to stay in like i don't want to do anything mm -hmm. and if i had to work for someone I, it was such a struggle mm -hmm. and then when i went and worked for myself i felt oh two days out of the month i'm just gonna not do anything now it's no different. It's just a normal day. That's Don't incredible. This is what keeps. This is what reinforces why I'm on it. Yeah, I get the cravings. Yeah, I get the smells. And there's still times I'm like, I miss the, certain foods, but it's not worth it. Yeah, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and when you just, first went vegan, what were what were the major differences that you felt, and what foods did you eliminate first? Was it like an order of things, or like it did was it start? actually I did do this. Yeah, I did the pescatarian for I think for a month when okay. I when I went. Pescatarian, which one's that? Is that where you eat fish? Just eat fish, just fish. Okay. Yeah, so I did the actual um because I am a person I'll do things gradually because I, I start to realize later in my 20s that you can't be all or nothing thinking because I'm really into personal development and I know it you, you'll be all you'll do it all and then it you'll crash and you'll have nothing you know you go back and that's such a, a it's it's for me and, and i see it for most people it your self-worth everything just seems to get a hit and it's not it's not really a loving kind thing you know we've got programs so when you understand about these programs and self-limiting beliefs and you know they take time to shift and you know and also in a society where you know you are ostracized and you feel when you're trying to fit in and there's certain things that i you know, if I stopped drinking, that was the first. I already felt resistance when I stopped drinking. I'm when I went pescatarian, but I, I knew ultimately I'd be vegan. But I knew I'm just going to take my time with it and let it develop, and really, re, you know, reset on why vegan, why, why all the, all the, the everything now in my life. I would choose. I, I always ask myself why. Why am I doing it? What is the purpose? And it really reinforces and keeps me on the the path of truth you know and now it mm. served me so and i just i worked i, I was always into the seminars the self-development seminars and to be successful in anything it's just daily habits you know the little things like compounds mm. and naturally it's gonna you, you're gonna move in that right direction so i just knew if i keep on it learn about it and really you know really get that mind body connection how Incredible. is this food making me feel yeah quite early on so i was quite blessed that i had that knowledge yeah no definitely and when you removed do you remember when you removed dairy like did what had a greater impact for you and your personal body like was it dairy or was it gluten what was it that or was it dairy, the meat? which one sort of dairy had the most significant okay well it, it was difficult because i've gone i would say dairy now i know look when i look back dairy because of all the inflammation i didn't realize how after training when I cut out the dairy, I didn't have the aches and pains. And sometimes mm. I felt I'm not lifting heavier because I'm not feeling as achy. That's incredible. But it's not, I was lifting more. So I was actually wow. getting more strong. So this is another misconception. I right. can, I'm the strongest I've ever been. Like I can do 12 pull-ups, four right. rounds. And I could never do that, you know, like when I look back, I was like, wow, I'm much more strong. So I noticed the inflammation went right down. So mm. my recovery, was much quicker and I just felt more energized in the gym and I my sessions could if I wanted to, to be longer and I didn't feel as depleted so that was the first thing I noticed with the dairy mm -hmm. the gluten started to come late when I went raw when I started okay. to realize oh because I was heavy on the past and I was I was encouraging a lot of pasta a lot of rice 
it did save me to some point, you know, because that I, for me on that journey, it was like that's how I believed I was able to cut out. Because if I'm cutting out everything, it's again all or nothing thinking. I'm like, yeah. this, I'm not going to stick to it. Yes, and yeah. the, it's about the long term. So I kept stick kept sticking to that and having that in my head. So I just like, okay, I'll deal with the gluten or the pasta if that's the potential issue. Well, I didn't know at the time, but I was just like, if I can eat more of that, that it'll cut out the meat and the dairy. So I was already seeing benefits from cutting out meat, dairy, and eggs. And then it was when I was going um, on the road until four, I noticed the pasta, the rice, the, even the potatoes, they're leaving a rock in my stomach. I feel yeah. sluggish, you know, especially when you're eating raw all day and you're having that in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I didn't eat small portions. So I'm not a, because I've gone, what I wanted to come away from is that restrictive lifestyle that so I would definitely my first year of raw until four, I did put some weight on because I was always restricting, even vegan, I was restricting at times because I have big blowouts, big binge episodes, and then I'll overtrain or try and reduce uh, my calories. So I realized in the raw till four, I didn't, I just wanted to come away from calorie counting. I'll eat as much as I want. Then I realized, okay, the pastas, that the, the, they're not making me feel so good. And the more raw days I was having, I thought I'll just experiment, see how I feel. And then I was doing some juice cleansing, some little mini cleanses here and there. And I was like, I feel good on that. That's so I made the association, okay, gluten, pasta, the rice is right. not, so I, I replaced them with pumpkin. So I just transitioned pumpkin, Brilliant. vegetables. So right. and this is where I meet with my clients. I meet them where they're at. You know, I don't expect mm. them to be wet. People think they look at you now where you are and you're eating just raw foods. Mm. <laughs> it's like, how are you even satisfied? It's because I've gradually transitioned. I've changed. It's not just, you know, the psychological side of it with all the, you know, the addictions. There mm. is the physiological side with the microbiome. You I was know, just going to say that. Yes. I yep. crave these foods mm -hmm. and I never felt satisfied. But if I, if I had to have 10 banana smoothies, to feel satisfied, to keep me on. I just knew, I, I had a year in my mind, I just knew if I can have as many smoothies as I want, no calorie restriction. It's a good feeling, isn't it? Smoothie. It really was. And at the time I felt bloated, it, it said, you know, there was a lot of bloating mm -hmm. at first. I just pushed through it. So right. I do encourage pushing through sometimes, you know, as in when you are, if it's, if it's, if it's through, if it's whole food, push through it. Mm. And then you gradually adapt. And now I'm at the point where I probably don't eat as, as much as I used to, you know, even my, when I say my binges, I don't even really have the binges anymore. When I do, there's nothing. And you, know, you look back, you're like, I had like 3000 calorie binge episodes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just to have that food freedom, the liberation is, is a great feeling. And I, and mm -hmm. now I still, I, I never count calories. I don't have that lifestyle of feeling bad. I don't feel bad when I eat now. And don't you think it has a beautiful effect, like as a flow on effect for your confidence and self-worth when you have that food freedom? because you just feel more in control and empowered. Yes. Yeah, because you don't realize how it affected your life, mm. how it really stopped me from being the best I can be, you know, mm. really had those days where just feeling worthless, mm. not feeling good enough. And yeah, it really a just spiraled. Mm. It really was. It was a dark period. I used to always say, I've, there's always a dark cloud over me, you know, mm. why? why can't I just be normal? I didn't feel mm. normal. I was like, what's, I was always like, what is wrong with me? Mm. And it was not until like, the food, the food plays a huge part in your mental health. Mm. You know, I was like suffering all the time thinking I'm, you know, I'm using food to comfort, to suppress mm. and escape. And that was my main issue. That was the, the, the problem that was making me feel like that. Soon as I started to get healthier, mm -hmm. all that fog started to lift the clarity mm. come in, the confidence. Oh, that's the awesome. Feeling good. Yeah, yeah. all lifts. It's yeah. all it's all linked. Your diet is really the, the key for you know for big change. You know, you can do all the personal development and the mental work, but if you haven't really got that I, it all links together, but I feel the diet is really a a, a catalyst for yeah, a true. I agree. Diet. Yeah, I agree definitely. And so when you first went vegan and in in turn raw vegan was there anything in particular like something really significant that you healed other than like the clarity and the the brain fog yeah and... cellulite was a big thing for me and mm -hmm. I, I didn't have major health issues but i i did regularly feel if i was eating too much gluten i was tired so mm -hmm. really when i taken that out that yeah i was much more vibrant but on and off i had ibs that pretty much 
it did go a lot when I stopped eating meat, mm -hmm. but it would come on at times hormonally, and that has gone now. I don't get IBS. Maybe in the transition, I look right. back the transition. There was a few, you know, uncomfortability, gut issues. Do I have that? Unless I eat something that he has like an oil or something, then it, I can have a reaction. Right. But generally, yes, yeah, cellulite, my IBS. I had my blood work done a year or so ago and no issues. I used to be anemic. All right. I never checked it when I was vegan. Oh no, I did once in the first year of veganism and I didn't, I didn't have anemia, but before then I was always comes up on my levels and it made sense why I was tired. So it's interesting, isn't it? People think, oh, you're really? going to be vegan. You're going to be anemic. It was the opposite. Yeah. So yeah, lots of, uh, and, and weight weight loss. I don't have to worry about weight gain now. It, it's amazing. It's, it's an it's a great feeling. Like I don't have, yeah. It's all just that liberation of not having food control you. For mm. me, that was the biggest for me. You know yeah. the emotion, and then the spiritual aspect. You know the my meditation practice is much much deeper in the downloads I'm, I'm receiving. I, I, I knew about this before. And then when you juice cleanse, you've probably experienced it yourself. You feel much more connected. And there's oh, a definitely. sense of peace. There's a different frequency oh, when you eat raw. hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, I feel much more, like you call it elevated. Like I, I go mm. through my day much more blessed and I love that. just conscious. So That's yeah. And said. I, I'd never, yeah, I never was able to articulate before, but now it's, it's much, it's just a deeper sense of peace and right. trust. Like instead of being in fear all the time. I love that. And At what point did you realize into the journey, into the sort of going vegan and raw vegan, that food, that you saw enough changes that you, you had this light bulb moment. Did you have a light bulb moment? Number one, that food can heal. Yeah. Did you have that, that point of clarification? I knew, but I never had the. I had so many addictions, so I knew right. what the, you know. You're listening to all these raw vegans and vegans, and uh, especially in the raw, raw until four uh, mm -hmm. lifestyle, that they, they had a lot. There's a lot of benefits, but I still had some addictions. And then it was not until really I did the juice cleanse. So that's how I literally went from vegan or raw until four, and then I did the forty day juice cleanse uh, two and a half years ago. And I realized on that forty day juice cleanse, I'm not going back to cook cook just doesn't for me then a lot of i healed a lot of emotional aspects a lot of trauma from my childhood right like a lot of things that have you know just the 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 binge eating why i did certain things you know the, mm -hmm. there was a lack of integrity in the family and there's some things that um distrust and abandonment on certain areas so the all that surface so when i went that's what i say you, you start to dig deep it's like being on a psychedelic when you do a juice mm -hmm. cleanse or raw and pretty much high fruit you start to have these downloads and deep, like they call it the connections, the patterns, how mm -hmm. you are, why you are, and react to where, where you're at. And so for me, the big shift for the raw lifestyle was the 40 day juice cleanse. Okay. And I couldn't, I struggled to do, for, I had 40 days in mind for about a year prior to that. Right. Just, I did a seven day one in the August okay. in 2020, but just, I was, I didn't Was that your first, like, so what was the very first juice cleanse you ever did? Mm, I've who, done a who, water fast for seven days. Um, was that before or after the ago. juice cleanse? Many years ago. Okay, yeah, so before. Talking, yeah, five or six years ago, I did a water fast. I did mini cleanses three days. I right. always struggled, always. My addictions just took over. My right. comfort, my comfort and eating. What was the water fast like? Talk me through that. What was that experience like? Well, I'd say that was not intentional, really. I actually split up with uh, my ex and I just didn't want to eat. But right. I was. it's interesting, these patterns, because that's what happened with the juice cleanse. But in that instance, I didn't want But normally I eat. And this was right. very strange for me for not eating. But after two days, I was ready to eat. But I thought, you know what? I'm interested because I was curious i knew about water fasting i did some like say mini juice cleanses here and there never found a juice that i liked or oh really just, yeah but i think when i look back it was so my gut and my palate it's all changed mm. you know i didn't i didn't really eat that well and then yeah so when i split with i did so just i thought okay this is an opportunity to do the seven days so i did seven days and that's the same thing that happened in 2020 when i'd split with my ex I tried it in the August for seven days. 
I felt great. I was like, wow, I love it. But my addictions were still strong. As soon as I started to eat it, right. so that's one big thing. And what I share on my channel is when you break the fast is yes. the most crucial because it's kind of easy when you know what you're doing, you just have juices and you break it incorrectly, like start eating. I was having oil back to well my diet oh, was before. Right. That sent me on a spiral. Yeah, so I knew course. I was going to a food frenzy because you're having all these additives, these chemicals, yeah. you know, the oils and fats together and the sugars. So that when I look back, okay, let's break a fast properly. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that on my 40 day do well. I didn't do it as hard, but it was too soon when mm -hmm. I started to incorporate salads and I was having fattier. I, the transition's got to be so slow. Yes, depending I agree. on your mental where you've come from. If you've come right. from a restriction and binge eating, I had to take that time. So right. I'm, I'm, I'd be curious to see. I did a 30 day one last year. Okay. Did the same thing again with the just not taking it easy in um, incorporating raw foods back in. Mm -hmm. I did some cooked, I did a couple of things that was cooked, some vegetables and some oils straight back into a frenzy, but I didn't allow it to go back to full on weeks of eating cooked, but it's a few meals over a few period, a few days. And I was like, this, th th these are all lessons, the gifts to, to reinforce okay what would i do differently next time definitely i'm happy with that you know I, I always feel just do a juice cleanse once one time only never do it again you don't have to da, da, da. but sometimes we do sometimes we have to learn these lessons more i agree i agree and i think it's also a really great protocol to have you know regular juice cleanses whether it be two days three days one day whatever works for you everybody's yeah. so different but i think it's a great way just to maintain your health and to give your digestive yeah. system a bit of a break and you know, and yeah, your exactly. mind as well. And, you know, if you're time poor, I just think it's, yeah, if you're prepared and you're organized and then you can set yeah. yourself up and have a couple of jars of juice in the fridge and be, and be great for a couple of days, you know, two to three days if you've got a cold pressed juicer, totally. it works wonders. Yeah. So yeah. on your juice cleansers, how many juices were you drinking a day and sort of what, what volume, like in terms of consumption? Initial one on the 40 day juice cleanse, I was following Shane Sterling on the Raw Vegan Rising protocol. Okay. I was coached, coached and mentored by him. Oh, fantastic. Mastermind. Yeah, and I I love, yeah, when you resonate with someone, you just click, and I mm. loved his his methods and his protocol, which I kind of adjust depending on the person, but I just was having as abundance, never restriction. Right. So I was having three litres, three litres of juices a day. Right. Um, and because I felt like there was still some moments where I was, you know, wanting food, and I, and I knew, it'd be a di you know, you're just like, I just want to eat. Mm -hmm. wasn't really listening to my body right so i just juice so i would just juice so for most i would say i would be in abundant with the juices don't restrict and was that the, the i know he does a green juice was that the lemon ginger blast and a citrus juice was yeah. they the only yeah, two ones you had or was it something yeah. else no i stuck with the lemon ginger blast sometimes a watermelon but mostly the citrus juices because they're okay. so stringent they pull so yeah pineapple orange and grapefruit were my oh, go-to's beautiful and they're so cheap and abundant here in um, town, so it's super easy. Yeah, yeah very the lemon easy. ginger blast. I, I I went through periods where I didn't enjoy it, but no, I love you can cut, sort of like adapt it a little bit, and I mm. put extra mint in, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I was doing half and half. Okay. So that was the ratio I was doing, and, and even on the thirty day juice cleanse, I was still doing that protocol, but I wasn't drinking as much. I was listening more. Okay. I was because I wanted to have this the mind body connection. Am I hungry? You know, mm -hmm. intuitive drinking intuitive and that's how i work now intuitively eating rather than just doing what my emotions want you know i'm not my emotions you know and i've been run by emotions most of us are run so much when we're not even hungry during the juice cleanses did you do any other holistic protocols like colonics or infrared saunas yeah. or anything like that can you share the colonics, a little bit about yeah, those the the colonics. colonics i did a few times yeah okay. never did the saunas the colonics and the bicarb of soda I have my own protocol Ooh. that I share with the juice cleanse. I've never so heard of bi that before. Bicarb soda with a colonic? Yeah. And then, no, 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 with a colonic, just with your, so usually after, after a couple of weeks on the juice cleanse, right. um, using um, psyllium husk, bicarb, okay. it helps pull. So I was having a few tablespoons. I've got a set protocol that I use that helps pull the mucoid plaque out. And I was starting to get bits of the, uh, the plaque out. That's by using like, it's So you broom, mix like, psyllium husk? Out. You mix the psyllium yeah. husk with bicarb soda yeah. in a shake, in a drink. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. I've never heard yeah, of that. I'll, no, no I'll, bentonite clay, I'll, just the bicarbonate. Oh, bentonite clay. Sorry. I'm oh. <laughs> I was I'm glad like, you correct me on that. I'm like, I was like, bicarbonate. I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that. That was what I was saying in my head, but that came out. <laughs> right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You experienced the mucoid plaque. Did it work for you? It did. Bits were coming out, yeah, after about two weeks on it. Wow. That's yeah. quick. That's quick results. Yes. I really, felt really like good. that was. I'd done the seven day one prior in this in the August and I started having more fruits and I was pretty much high well, fruitarian. So right. I think that's why I, I removed so much. It was easy yeah, to just right. bring it out and come out. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm just curious. So what was the um do you remember like was there any other new benefits that you experienced when you went raw vegan that you hadn't had yet as vegan? Like, was there any other um, significant differences? Cellulite was my biggest thing. Really? I, okay. Yeah, that pretty went quickly, my cellulite, on, my, on the back of my leg. Is that due to the water consumption of all the fruits? I, no, I think it's all your acids coming out. You, you Now you're moving things around, your toxins are, right. are coming. It's, I, th- I, I believe, where I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's moving the lymph because oh, that makes so sense. the lymph's so stagnant in the body, you know, and I think flushing – not obviously water really helps but from the fruits and but you're really getting so much more in the fruits don't forget you're getting and even in the greens getting all these minerals you know the the, the healthy salts everything we need in the right ratio that's helping the breakdown so yeah. it's you're getting all those blocks and when you're removing the mucoid plaque as soon as you clean, cleanse that gut you mm-hmm. really start to see even like for my eyes the uh, my eye uh, my whites in my eyes are much clearer right. my hair is much um it doesn't break. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get it as long as I can. Without yeah, your it. hair is so healthy. It, it's a bit wet. I've just washed it. But just those, I would say, has... So really, for me, physically, it would be the weight loss, as in my whole not having a weight problem like anymore. Mm-hmm. It was never severe, but I was always having to do a certain thing, like overtraining or undereating. I don't have any of that anymore. But the emotional aspect was the biggest one for me, the balance that I have mm-hmm. in my life. Like I was saying, that trust. Mm-hmm. That it's just a much, and that, just my energy. It's more balanced. I don't get the spikes, the highs and the lows. I, I just feel for me, the number one was really the emotional side. Mm-hmm. The food freedom, do you know that? Not food taking over your life, not thinking mm-hmm. about food. All of, There's times in my day I don't think about food. Such I a forget blessing. sometimes I have to yeah because if I'm training and I'm on the a really good regime I need to eat and mm. I never had that before I was always wanted to eat everything right. because or anything that any reaction to something something stressful I don't eat like I oh I look back now everything was a, an excuse to eat or just a way to comfort myself right that is is true freedom That's for huge. Me. yeah what's your go-to favorite recipe for juicing, if I'm if I'm doing a cleanse or just general day to day, okay, just general day to day. No day to day. I I love simplicity. Okay. So my focus is really simple variety over time. I always say simple in a meal, but variety over time. Right. I love pineapple juice. Sometimes pineapple and ginger, mm. uh, watermelon and lime, That's uh, one of my orange favorites. juice. Right. Yeah, very simple. I mean, I do have my greens. I'll, I'll I like the lemon ginger blast. But the juices I, I do have re- regularly. I do enjoy my juices. Mm. Did you see like any major detox symptoms in the first two to three days? Like what was the point in, in the juice cleanse that you did? Did you hit any barriers or walls? So the, fe- the, the 40 day juice cleanse, I was definitely really hungry or I thought I was hungry. It wasn't as right. my emotion was talking, but I listened to that. I was like, you're mm-hmm. not hungry. You've just had a, half a liter of juice. Mm. <laughs> But the, yeah, the hunger first and then the emotional aspect was the crying, the releasing, letting go of limiting beliefs and old patterns, you know, that mm. the shedding. It was definitely a shedding experience. That's amazing. Uh, a lot of healing really came, but that was not easy. That was definitely mm. hard. I had to face without using food. Yeah, you know, there was times I was drinking loads of juice. So I would say the 30 day one that I experienced I listened more, mm-hmm. so a lot of them. Com- I wasn't down in it with juices, which is different, anyways. You're still not going to get that heavy feeling that you would with cooked foods. Mm. So instead of using as a distraction and escape, 
or even drinking a juice, I would be present and still and listen to what had to come up. What is Tony feeling? You know, what do I need mm. to love? And sometimes it just needed to be heard. Sometimes, because mm. we're always about fixing. Am I fixed? You know, how, what, what's wrong? Putting meaning to everything. I learned to not have meanings to everything. It just is. And I can love it no matter what. So if a certain emotion would come up, like anger, I was very angry a lot. And more so in my detox in certain periods. But that's because I wasn't using food to, to numb. Mm. And I just was like, okay, express it. Express this anger. It's mm. okay. I'm allowed to feel anger. I, I take a lot of work from Kyle Cease, who, who works on the present, on the stillness and meditation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, allow it to come up. Let, let Surrender. I'm not going to keep pushing it down anymore. Mm. If you want to be heard, let's be, let's, let's be heard. And I don't need to fix anything. Mm. I don't need to do anything about it. No meaning. Mm. It's a re that, that process for me was... I don't feel I would have, I don't know if I would have got to that without not using the food, do you know, because that was my, my crutch, so to say. Yeah. So for me to actually, instead of reacting to everything right, in a negative response, I'm just observing. I just, these are just thoughts, the thought forms that come in that That's we don't amazing. need for any, any emotional attachment. And I don't call them me anymore. It's just a pattern. It's just a pattern of program. It might not even be mine. It might be mm. someone else's. And we can even pick up people in the area where you are, all these thought forms come in, the news, the TV, you know, the family. They're, they're not even ours. Like some of them, I'm just like, that's not even mine anyways. Where did that come from? I'm, I'm really working on the uh, feminine energy rather than my mass. I'm very up, much in my masculine energy, a lot mm -hmm. like being busy, productive, mm -hmm. really embodying the feminine side where I can just be and just listen. And that's don't, beautiful. don't have to be anywhere. And I, I like, there's always something, to, there always will be, you know, there's always something. Yeah. So now I'm enjoying the, I have resistance at times, but sometimes it's just nice just to just sit and be and reflect and listen and do nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. That's a great place. Um, you, you remind me, you're talking now a little bit about Bruce Lipton's Biology of, Biology of Belief. And that's just such an incredible read, isn't it? And his works yeah. around that subject are amazing. And once you come to that distinction and understanding, it changes your perspective on everything. Yeah, because we're not, we don't have to be what our, our, who our parents are, mm. you know, all these, these, these the, the characteristics, you know, what we're saying we're brought up with. We can change by changing our environment. There's lots of things we can do mm. to shift. You know, I've come from a family that's reactive with anger. I didn't want to react. I mean, don't get me wrong. Anger is, is an emotion. It's a normal human mm. emotion. But where am I channeling in that? Where am I, am I aggressively attacking others? Or am I using it to, to make change? Mm. You know, so there's different ways. And yeah, through the bar, yeah, reading. I'm a big reader. I'd say the big thing for me, like I was saying in my personal development, is reading regularly. What's and one I always of your favorite books? I always use the, I'll, I'll add some, uh, 20 minutes of reading every day. Oh, that's but That's one book a month. That's 12 books a year. That's amazing. That, that's that's easy, a great that's approach, like, actually. If you think about it like that and you break it down, it means it makes it so much more achievable. It is. And that's where I live my life now. I was saying, you know, those little increment yes. things I do. Yes. But I read the book Power. So that, I would say my number one book is, I can't remember the author, and I think there's a few different variations of it, Power Hour. Uh, okay. You, in the morning to set your day up for success not just about productivity but just for you feeling you know you, you feel I love good that. is i do 20 minutes of reading 20 minutes of meditation and 20 minutes of exercise it's oh, so much longer than that great. now but that's, right. that's what i did 10 years ago i started implementing over 10 years ago yeah i love i love just just i don't i never i used to always try and clear the thoughts or try and get in this state of zend out but i don't i just say just 20 minutes and it's just listening it's just listening mm. listening to those thoughts like um iscat tolly always says is just imagine they're just clouds just drifting on by like oh hello mm. and i've been associating what the book i'm reading recently is debbie ford dark side of the light chasers i've just been using lots of little tools to nurture the soul and not get too carried away with these you know they say we put so much meaning to the emotions and if it wasn't mm. for the the raw foods and then with the meditation together, it's allowed me to really, I say with those downloads, being able to feel what's going to serve me. And the power hour really encouraged that routine, I would say. You know, yeah, that's great.
And what were your other favorite books? Do you have anything else that really helped you on your journey in terms of food and nutrition? Food and nutrition. I enjoyed the mucus, mucusless diet annals. Mm -hmm. I like the personal development books with the food. I listen audios. That's okay. what seems to be a, I listen to a lot of Shane and Sterling, his life regenerator, enjoy his work. Mm. Um, and Robert Moss. I've read his book, oh, Robert Moss. Book. He's great. Yeah, yeah. Really good. But majority, yeah, read wise is more personal development audios when I'm walking the dogs or even at the gym, I'm listening to the food. Because I don't overcomplicate. I won't say I listen to a lot of the food side because it's, I go with what into you know intuitive i'm like because there's a lot of conflicts even in the raw movement this con I agree. contradiction this con yes. you know, it's, it's everywhere so you know herbs i'm learning a lot about the herb side with robert morse but and detoxification mm -hmm. but i'm really skeptical on the pro you know when when you're especially in the system i'm cautious of what what's being shared so i just i'm I, i'm one of those i'll explore myself and that's I wonderful. feel it's so simple. Like mm -hmm. this is, we make it so complicated and complex mm -hmm. when it doesn't need to be. We just need to get out of the way, keep the, keep the food simple, mm -hmm. stop having too much variety. For me, there's a lot of stimulants in, if you're having a lot of variety mm -hmm. and that's what keeps us more wanting, you know, we're, we're always in this desired state and always seeking for the next fix. If we can keep things simple and get back to simplicity, you're going to be just happy. We're just sat there in the moment, you know, and this gratitude comes in and flows into your life oh, about this. That. So that is, it's funny. It's interesting. I've not acknowledged that before. I don't actually read a lot of health books. Any, I used mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. but I don't so much anymore because it is so, so simple. I think the only recent one I read a month ago was the heal yourself 101 with that Marcus, the, the healthy okay, life. Yes. Great book. Um, yeah, he's great. And, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any. I mean, I've I've read the Dr. McGregor and all the starch oh, solution. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, so in the past I've read those yep. starch solution books. Did really, you ever follow that? Can yeah. I ask? Did you ever do the starch solution? I, a version I of it? Did with the raw, yeah, in the like the raw raw till four lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But after experimentation and the way I feel now, I feel good with the raw foods. So right. I don't really want to be you. I don't even want. Yeah, any real starch is heavy, heavy foods in my diet because yeah. I know what happens. I go into a frenzy even with that. Mm -hmm. um, so unless my body's totally clean and I reintroduce something, I, who says never? But I feel it, it right now it's never going to happen. Yeah, fair I feel enough. great on the raw foods. And what about 80 10 10? Did you ever mm. try yes, that? Yes, I've been well, on every single diet. <laughs> It definitely was a diet. Yeah, but it's part of the journey, all. isn't it? It's it's really it good though to experience and yeah, everybody oh. has different, you know, reasons for doing yeah. different things or being drawn to different things. I first was drawn to David Wolf with the beauty um book yes. that he had. Yeah. I don't even know how long ago that was now, two thousand and five yeah. or six. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, but is, then so many. Eddie Ten Ten was my oh. second book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eddie Ten Ten, yeah, I did that for a few months on and off. Right. Um oh, no, I did no there was a long periods of time in the um Raw until dinner. Yeah. I think I maybe even did longer. I'll have, have, have to reflect because there were periods that I did do that and I didn't mind it. Yeah. I was feeling more called to have more greens because mm -hmm. I was eating a lot of starches and fruit. Right. But yeah, I felt, I feel my best. And I'm incorporating more because I've gone through a phase of having a lot of fruits and now I want more salads. Right. So I do half and half. I have. Okay. I eat generally two meals a day, so I do the intermittent fasting. Like I yourself. was just going to ask you, what what does a day in the <laughs> life look like with food and diet? Yeah, I generally don't eat until after ten or twelve, and I stop eating between four and six p.m. because I go to bed nine ten p.m. so I can okay. get that deep quality sleep. That's so really good. Yeah, I don't want anything heavy before bed. I notice the difference. Like I say I've experimented. I'm very detailed. I like to see how That's wonderful. I react. And with my client working with a lot of clients over the years, I of get course. them to experiment. You know, I say something, but it all depends on where they're at. You know, I might say, "Oh, do this, mm. do this, and this," and think it's going to work for them. When no, it depends on their gut, their their health, mm. their mental health, everything. All lifestyle factors all have to be. That's why coaching is great because it's great to get the support, the accountability, and the the guidance. Because, mm -hmm. but we can also explore. You know, I'm I'm very into mental. I'm always investing in mentorship because. It's got me where I am. So that was a big key in my, my transition 
into the, the lifestyle. Um, but the intermittent fasting, yeah, so 10, usually 10 or 12, usually the six or eight hour eating window is what works right. for me. Um, on average, eight hours I eat. So, okay. and, I, and like I say, I, my best time is stop eating at 4 p.m. But okay. I do some meeting with friends. My, my evenings are my time where I, I really get into sort of like the, the reading and they're just slowing down and self-care uh, nurturing right. self-care yeah so Beautiful. i love my evening and, so and i think the have... lifestyle is important oh i agree i agree wholeheartedly so do you have like a ritual do you do like lemon water or is there something special you do first thing in the morning to like to break the fast so to speak when you wake up what's the Not first the thing room, but i used to do the lemon water a lot okay um and i, do, I used to do the warm especially in england they always have okay, a lot of yeah. lemon water but now uh, no, I mean, there's something I like because I experiment either with the green juice. I have a green juice when I break the fast or sometimes a lemon water, not off. Mm -hmm. Well, or cook. It's usually a coconut because I'm usually coming You're back. You're so from, lucky to have that there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, fresh coconut. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I, have, I usually have that and then I'll have a smoothie bowl or a smoothie or just a mono fruit meal. Right. And then a few hours, three hours later, I'll have a big, a really big salad. Okay. Um, and what does that look like for you? What's a salad? What's a typical salad? Very simple. I'll go through phases of just the basics. I'll, I'd like to think, put things in containers and do pick and mix type of thing. Oh, great. Um, sometimes really simple, right. lettuce and tomatoes with the sauce. I do enjoy my sauces. I've learned, uh, learned high fat sauces sometimes, depends okay. on what I'm feeling I'd like to have. I like, I put these on my channel as well. They're really, I have real like five go-to. So five oh. high fat sauces, okay. five low fat. And I, I used to just have them on the fridge. So Fantastic. that it's easy. Your brain's not, you yeah. know, if you, especially when you're new to this transitioning, mm. make things easy for yourself. Get prepared. Preparation's key. Dressings, get them ready. Bulk, bulk make them for two or three days. And then you have one day of that, one day of the peanut sauce, one day of the soy sauce. It's, uh, oh. I, we do raw vegan. Okay. Um, I was saying my boyfriend's more the creator. He does amazing sauces. I can't believe the raw. I'm like, wow. If it's me, like I said, on my own, I'm so simple. Like he's been right. away for four days. I'm just eating fruit. That's um, incredible. And so what like would one of the high fat sauces be? And what would what would a recipe be for the high fat and one for the low fat? Can you I, remember oh, them off the top I of your enjoy head? Anything with the nuts in. So with the nuts, I have a cashews or seeds, okay. hemp seeds, and then just a bit of apple cider vinegar and garlic and some okay, onions so sometimes. really simple okay oh yeah yeah that's nothing great. Uh, but that's mean, the best way to do it it really is yeah and i and i have a, a plenty of it as well i'm not just having a little it's not a little ball it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> drench it depending on what i fancy and then my low fat ones i'm really enjoying i've got like a tomato it's not chili too strong i put a tiny bit of chili mm -hmm. in a bit like a salsa with okay. tomatoes some onions and the um sweet uh, and then what else have I been enjoying with the sauces? At the moment, I'm eating out quite a lot of these, because where I'm in the south of Phuket, there's quite a few raw vegan restaurants. Mm -hmm. So I've been eating, I was telling you about the Burmese salad. I have that every day. I love it. Amazing. <laughs> I'm curious. So when your clients come to you and you've got somebody that wants to go vegan, let's talk about vegan first and then raw vegan. What are some of the biggest struggles that you hear people having when they first try to adopt, you know, a plant-based or vegan diet? Yeah, you've got different. So I've got clients that don't even want to go to uh, raw. Okay. And that was where I was. So I can resonate. I'm like, you don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, start off with. So I don't normally get, I've actually had one client of mine two years ago. Um, he was eating meat and depending on where they're at, slowly transition. So usually my clients that come to me are already vegan. Mm -hmm. There are the odd few that have, uh, are eating meat, but want to take that out. Mm -hmm. so that they yeah it depends on the person but some of them feel that the meat gives that satiation you know the full mm -hmm. feeling so that's where I'll that we could start off with uh, the rice or the pasta or the potatoes i encourage more like the pumpkin and the potatoes rather than the others depending on how sick they are so again it all depends on where they're coming from right um, ideally i want them to start with the raw until dinner that's right a really good place to start if obviously if they're if they're eating meat and dairy dairy is the first thing to go and oils so it's really i they they fill in an application and we really go from where they're at but 
ultimately is encouraging more raw foods as long as they can fill their plate with more raw foods mm -hmm. that is where yeah i'll encourage and really looking at the lifestyle you know well can incorporate some rituals that's going to make this journey enjoyable and, mm. and more mindful rather than excellent unconscious i think that's where the, the suffering comes when they're not they just i call it survival drift you know you're just bouncing from one from one stress to another rushing mm. around how can we put in some you know rituals there that can allow us to just slow the mind a little bit and be more in touch with the mind body mm. and is there anything that somebody should avoid when they're on the raw vegan diet do you think I would avoid, yeah, salt and oil. Oil is so toxic. Mm. And that's where you realize how, when you incorporate back, it's when you take it out and you incorporate back in how sluggish you feel. Mm. So that would be the first. And I try and focus not on the fear side. Mm. I just try and see, depending on say where they're at. A lot of my clients are coming to me, it's fairly new. You know, they're not mm. even eating a lot of fruits and veg you know and I'm, I'm reinforcing fruit is not a snack you know it's a it's a meal if we're coming from like oh you can't have this you can't have that yeah mm. we can have some knowledge of it but again i'm all about simplicity there's mm. enough information out there how foods work in the body and now the scientific side of it let's just go back to basics you know i can go through all the you know the ins and outs deeply but really people don't want that they just want to be able to feel good and feel full what mm. can i eat not what I can't eat. So let's yeah. focus on incorporating more of the whole undenatured foods. Back to simplicity. We know really deep, innately, what we, what our bodies need. You know, mm. when you get back to a state of balance, mm -hmm. when your life's not so chaotic, you can start seeing like, oh yeah, fruit. Of course, fruits. It's got everything. It's all the structure. Everything of what your body needs is in that fruit. Mm. You know, so eat an abundance of the fruits and vegetables and don't don't restrict yeah, you're never gonna I agree. and then the more you have of that the less you want of the other stuff mm. so let me ask you now that you've sort of been on this journey for a certain period of time and you feel like that you're at a place where i guess everybody can say there's always room for improvement but to a certain degree you've mastered your own you know lifestyle and you're happy and at peace and you feel balanced what would be your best advice if somebody else was starting brand new now to jump into raw vegan they wanted to just go straight in so what what would you say to them would you to, to start off what would be a great starting point would it be a juice cleanse would it be do a raw food? Okay. yeah it, i'd get to know where where they are like i was saying it's always see you know because sometimes sometimes it's so it's not easy for for some coming depending on where they're at you know mm -hmm. some it can be easy some have a lot of resistance but a juice cleanse can really catapult, yeah, help reset. A juice cleanse is really, I mean, there's two ways you could, there's so many ways, but I would say the two ways is just incorporate more raw foods. Mm -hmm. Go fully raw. Have, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's loads of meal plans out there you can have. And there's a lot of, idea, you know, for me, I don't really focus too much on, you know, a diet plan. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll give them an idea, but there's so much out there that they can research. We really get we get more of the the, the mindset mm -hmm. um, focus. But either that or the juice cleanse, mm -hmm. and if they can really get rid of those that the waste, you know, all those biofilms, the mucoid plaque, mm -hmm. that waste that can help with you know releasing. I, I wouldn't say it totally gets rid of all your cravings because, like I said, as mm -hmm. soon as you start to incorporate foods back in. You can start going down depending on what you're eating it might bring back a lot of you know you can get not just uncomfortable uncomfortability in the digestion but also the the programming depends on if they're, they're a binge eater do you know where they're at but mm -hmm. the juice cleanse can really catapult it, it has so many benefits mm. and if you do the the break the fast the juice fast right then you will go on to being really yeah successful in the body. i think it really i would say a 40 day is is a good number okay. what i've seen in success rate and what yeah, do because... you think is the best way to break cleanse do you think it's watermelon or papaya is it just mm -hmm. is it okay. watery okay water fruits yeah papaya is good um you could do a prune test just to see if you are finished first what is so... that can you just explain to me what a prune test is <laughs> yeah it's if it's going to come out because normally if you've got clean digestion you right. generally go on a cleanse so eat a couple of prunes is that what you do yeah yeah a couple oh. of prunes yeah, the prune test is soon as is your first meal right and um, it should come straight out if it comes straight out and you go to the toilet 
Right. You've got a really nice, clean. And that's just eating one prune. Eat one prune. I've, I've never, never had a prune. prune. Yeah, one prune. Yeah. I've never. I've uh, had dates, but I've never had a prune. Okay. One of the highest fiber and water content. So, oh, and they yeah. say continue with your juice cleanse until there's no liquid or solid waste. Ideally. Wow. You want to keep okay. going. Yeah, you want to okay. keep going. And if you okay. really want to get the maximum result, right. you usually uh, you know, get a lot of mucoid plaque out. It's very rare someone gets it out before 40 days, and depending on the diet. Like I said, it's so many variables, but generally if you've been eating a raw food diet for many years, you, mm. you may only even need two weeks. I would say 40 days is a good number, what I'm seeing. Okay. Usually um, they're still going with um, some, some liquid waste. With the cleansing, really push through to 40 days to really okay. get the, the results. You know, you're going to see a lot more, definitely deeper healing and regeneration of okay. the cells on, on day 40. But if you are still releasing, right. it's intuitive but encouraged to go longer, really. Okay. I, I felt I should have gone, I could have gone longer. Right. Um, on those fast, fast, but I, cho okay. I chose not to. Um, yep. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Yeah. And did you use a specific juicer? Was it like a Breville or a Nama or what were you Oh, the Nama I'd love to get, but mine are just as good. I use, okay. uh, it's a Chinese brand, Nui. Um, okay. Nui, N-I-U-I. So I bought two. I bought a small shoot one and a larger one, and they're okay. it's, it's brilliant, brilliant, just as efficient. Yeah, I, I do like when I'm on a cleanse. Mm -hmm. I like to. I, I did it twice or three times. Uh, sieve and um, like so, I strain it. Usually, if I'm just having a cleanse, uh, sorry, uh, just a general juice, daily juice or something, I'll just strain it once. Okay, but um, but it's so it's still so good. I don't. I, I mean, it's a reasonably price. It's not expensive. Mm. You know, like I think it's, it's like good. $200 or something. Amazing. Yeah. Good, um, good price. I'd like the Nama. That sounds have you got yeah. I you don't have know. I've got oh. two of the Kuvings, the cold pressed juice. The, um, oh, yeah. the really good ones. And honestly, yeah. I just, yeah, I use them. I use them both actually. So what, they're different models. Yeah. And I love them both. And so I do probably, I batch juice every week, a couple of times a week, probably two or three times a week. And I'm Fantastic. always taking big jars with me. I just can't live without juice is yeah, one of my favorite things. Good. Can't live without it. Yes. So, it's so yeah. easy and it's hydrating. It I always think you're gonna just, get that injection of these yes. vitamins and minerals. Yeah. A full on injection is good. Yeah. But I love the I love the prepping of juice. There's something about it that's really it's like going into meditation for me. I put some nice music wow. on and I just yeah. like the process of cleaning the fruit and then juicing and then putting my nice colored lids on all the jars and organizing it. I don't know, it sounds crazy, but I I, I do enjoy it. And if you can, if yeah, if you have that sacred time yeah. and you know that it's so, it makes it more enjoyable, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely, yeah, yeah. You're going to be more encouraged to do it. I agree. I agree. So, if I was to ask you, what's one thing that you know now that you didn't know back when you were first starting out on your health journey, right back in the very beginning when you were starting to go into the gym and with fitness and everything? What piece of golden sort of like advice or nugget of wisdom do you know now that you wish you knew back then? I would just, I have no regrets. You are where you are, but it's not having that all or nothing thinking. Mm. You know, I feel that is a, a destructive way to think, you know, trying to like, like back then I'd gone every single diet and have that quick fix. Let's just get back to simplicity, mm. back to simple foods, get back to what mother nature showed us to eat, you know, simple, simple foods. And, and not be hard on yourself you know this is this is a process we've got a lot of unlearning to do <laughs> really well said it's true unlearning it's just you know we've got so many thoughts programmed into our brains from such a young age that yeah it's really an unlearning process for well, look sure at, look at the mass you know you look now in like the milk industry oh the i know it's just when you start to unveil un, like you see the truth like how toxic acidic these foods are uh they're, they're killing us you know and they're still they're, promoting yeah. calcium and osteo it's crazy oh, isn't it yeah yeah and realizing it takes it away it's actually making it worse it's leaching mm. the body of calcium so when you wake up to a lot of there's a lot there's a lot of lies mm. uh, if you can take your power back and research i just that's why i say there's so much they want the confusion out there you know they do want to make it hard for you and hard to reach you know these this simple way of living is not 
not never was as accessible as it is now mm. but i just think just go back to basics if mm. we go back to basics then yeah i think just back to nature that's all i keep re re repeating to myself let's just you know you've got all these addictions and all these programs but if we can work on the young program you know they're the rewiring but in the meantime just get back to basics get back to the not you know restricting not calorie counting you don't need to do any of that mm, i agree and just get back to your truth who we who we are you know and, and i say about the fruits like there's so many life codes in these fruits the energy the frequency and it, it just makes sense everything's vibrational you know and mm. i i just think i want that in my body not dead not dead food not dead animals Definitely. or the cooked food that's got nothing left to to allow us to fuel ourselves Mm. If you were to to say to sum up your experience and say what you're most grateful for through this health journey, how would you articulate that? I'm I'm so glad that I am curious and oh. rebel rebellious as well. Okay, that great. serves me because I know what they're trying to do with the food industry, and I'm like, no, nah, you're not going to do that to my body. You're not going to take away That's my health great. and. So I'm, I'm quite, yeah, I've had that in me. I have this fire. I used to try and turn it down, this fire right. in me. But I fuel it, I channel it in much more positive ways now rather than destructive. You know, before was the suppression mm. because I knew the world wasn't, you know, I didn't like the injustices of the world, you know. Mm. So I would, I would eat or suppress, do things to, because I felt helpless. Whereas now I'm much more in control and of how I create my reality and how I can help Incredible. help others, you know, like with the dogs and the dog rescue and other people to allow yeah. them to be healthy and the dog, everyone benefit all the animals, but it's a win. I say, I say it's a win-win for everyone. A yeah. win-win for you, you're going to feel good, take that power back. Win-win for everyone else because they're going to get the best you. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to get all this incredible energy and inspiration mm -hmm. and the environment, the animals, everyone wins. That's how Amazing. I look at it. I feel if you if you're debating stuff, I'm just like, well, is it a win-win for everyone? Mm. I want to see us all thrive, not just being this self-absorbed. You know, at first, you know, I was always about how I can lose weight. It was always about weight loss. I'll do any quick fix. No, now it's to nourish my body, to nourish my mind. Yeah, that's beautiful. I was just going to ask you what matters most to you now, but you just answered that basically for <laughs> me. I feel like that's your true purpose. Um, really and you run this amazing health community online and community-based website and tell us about the dogs because most of the proceeds from or is it all of the proceeds from your website go towards funding you know the foundation for the for the dogs getting those stray dogs off the street a lot of my yeah my funds my own money yeah does come to the animals and um, but That's i incredible. do have fundraising at times when things have got a little bit crazy so we have our right. fundraisers so what but do yeah, you do with the dogs I, tell me I, how did you get into that tell us all about it yeah oh it's been it's been a journey first time in thailand in 2000 and was it 11, uh, 11 or 12. i was just shocked the amount of street sick street dogs on every single corner that mm. i thought people are just walking by and doing nothing mm. like their skin's so sore no hair one you know uh, one of the legs has come off oh, it just i was just really so sad. like never ex experienced that before mm. so it was super shocking for me Mm -hmm. Even now, I can I recall back those memories, and I'm like, the one thing that really changed the trajectory. You know, everyone says they have that pinnacle. Yes, and yes. they're always clear at first. But I do look back now. I I was in Bangkok, and I went to a market. I think it was right. Bangkok. And I was at a market, and this gorgeous white dog. Well, she had no hair, but oh. really mange, uh, fungus skin, really sore, oh, itchy. Geez. And I felt, I was just like, I can't believe like, what's, you know, this dog, what's happened to this dog? And I fed her and then she followed me back to the apartment, which was like a kilometer away. Wow. Um, and she stayed a few hours and then I was like, I don't know what to do. Like I shouldn't have brought, but she came back and at the time I didn't know what to do. So I, I thought the only best thing was to take her back to the market right. and lose her later. And I cried even now I get like, oh, because I regret that I didn't do anything. So yeah. Okay, that's never ever gonna happen. It sat with me. I can't even watch um, films with any any animal cruelty. No, I can't spirit. either. Like cowspiracy, yeah. I can't watch them either. Yeah, I cried at. Um, I've watched some things, but I just even like general films of 
like Jurassic Park when the cow was going. <laughs> the cow was going. I cried. Everyone was looking at me. I was like, I'm crying. Aww. I was like, crazy for animals, and so that set me on the path of okay, what does people do when they see these animals? I didn't even think about you know, could I get a vet? Could I get? I just didn't. Well, I was thinking of these things, but I, didn't, I had no idea. And I was like, mm. who do you reach out to? So I want to make it easy for people if they see these sick, sick dogs, sick animals, they've got a little process that they could go through, you know, like they can get through to myself on my website or in groups. We have Facebook, a Facebook group of communities. So reach out to people that, you know, can help, you know, this, Amazing. This, and now I, you know, I get, I, I, I might have to do like a quite an, an in-depth uh, page just to, to go through that process if, if something were to happen. I mean, there's, there's a lot of organizations here now. We're very blessed in, in the welfare side. Uh, we do have a lot, so we can reach out to a, a lot. And, and I do the same. Um, if someone reaches out to me, I will go through the process with them or I'll help that and intervene and help the dog myself. Yeah. But yeah, we've adopted, we, we focus mainly on the pound dogs. There's a government dog pound here in Phuket, right. of a thousand dogs. It's a, bit, it's a very sad place. It's got a lot better than what it used to be. There's right. a lot more structure now, but the adoptions and walking dogs is very slim. Volunteers, there's always, yeah, there's always need for that. But um, I focus on getting, you focus on the adoption side. And I think we've adopted 600 dogs, yeah, in about, in about nearly six years since I've been here. That's amazing. Dogs. I've been part of a few thousand, but 600 oh. is in my own responsibility yeah that's so incredible i can't believe it. That. <laughs> yeah. yeah that is really a beautiful thing to be doing you know it's funny they, that set me on the path of so that was the way i was going more towards and and being like doing the vegan activist but the health because my health started to deteriorate um, right. a few years back even in, in the ve eating vegan i was eating right i was eating really rubbish food like right. just a lot of the mock meats and I noticed I, could, I didn't have the energy and I was getting angry a lot with people because oh, wow. in rescue, it's, it's, it's mentally tough. You're not dealing with just the cruelty, but you're getting a lot of people, you know, letting in any anything you do, letting, but it was really taking a toll on my mental health. Oh. And I thought, I don't want to suffer as well. It's not of fair course. on the dog, it's not fair on anyone else. So I made that connection. Actually, I need to get well. I need to think of me. Mm. So I was... I was definitely overdoing it and and having I felt guilty anytime I spent a bit of money on myself. So I went down that path right. and I'm glad I was open and mindful of that. And that's when I started to eat more raw foods. So it was that really that the juice cleanse really cemented it, but the curiosity of thinking, I need to eat better, I need to have raw foods in my diet, not these that's a fascinating I also thought vegan, connection. Vegan yeah. foods is good. Yeah. But I thought now, if I'm feeling my best, these dogs are gonna thrive, you know? Cause you see yourself, if you're if you're getting angry at a dog, you know, there's, I've had puppies and there's poo and there's wee everywhere and I'm yeah, stressed and angry. Yeah. They can feel that energy and I don't want a stressed, angry, you know, a hostile. I don't want to be like that. And it was well, not, I, I saw it in others and I was like, and I was reactive and right. not a very, I was becoming quite, I was never, rude to anybody but i just didn't i just didn't know how to uh, sometimes i just isolate myself and i thought mm -hmm. this is i just don't want to be in this 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 um, like unhealthy sort of thought process so yeah that shifted a lot so that's why i want to combine both if you've yes got right you get people healthy less stress people are going to give more you're going to get the best versions of these people so mm -hmm. i thought well, and not only, also not only for dogs as well, but for, for mums, you know, because it's the same Everyone. thing. It's the yeah. nurturing instinct that nurturing. comes through. So yeah. there's no different. I think, yeah, doing a retreat that combines the both would be yeah. something that people would absolutely love. I think you should go for it, definitely. Who would have thought you connect? The, well, it does make sense, but some of you think you do one or the other. I'm like, I don't mm. want to do one or the other. But I've got a rescue. I don't have a rescue as it as it or standalone. It's it's fostering. We offer. We, I have right. myself and others that foster for me, rehabilitate, and then we find them homes. And I now want a bigger place so I can have some retired retired dogs. You know, the dogs that nobody wants, the sick, right. and they just live out their lives Aww. at the sanctuary. Beautiful. And then we get the adopted ones. You know, the the ones that need to be rehabilitated. I've got a really clean, sharp system now. Rather than having twenty dogs out at a time, right. we usually have about five. Okay. Get them rehabilitated, get them adopted, 
have a little have a bit of a team so I can run the rescue uh, run the retreats and the health side but I educate like you know these animals they have souls and they and that there's no difference to the other ant. I mean, you never know I may have some other rescue pigs and chickens and things who knows um you know and and having that sense of yeah don't just do it you're not just doing it for yourself you're doing it for others there's a greater mm. purpose I think we need a bigger purpose than just ourselves. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel, yeah, my heart is so full just hearing all of this. <laughs> Honestly, it just really, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. You're such an incredible okay. inspiration. Really, really are. You've given me goosebumps as well. Incredible inspiration. <laughs> and you're so full of knowledge and wisdom. And anybody out there that's looking for a coach and then wants to get some new principles for healthy mindset and lifestyle, I cannot recommend Tony enough. So would you do me a favor and tell us your website details so everybody can find you? And I'll put all the links and everything below as well. Yeah, it's at rawlishissue.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I did a little bit of TikTok. Okay. I'm having fun. I'm exploring the fun creative side on TikTok. Oh, good. But- Maybe get back to that. I've st- uh, started a little bit, but uh, yeah. And, and also Tony J for the animals is my other site okay. as well for the, for, for the dogs. Okay. Um, Do you have some animals. Where, okay. Can people donate there for the, for the dogs? Yes. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And do you have a date set ready for a retreat or is that just something in the works for this year? This year I think we may start small, um, okay. but it's going to be in, more intimate and I might do some group gatherings later, but it'll be more like one-on-one or maybe couple um, retreats more, but much more intimate side. I think initially I get asked all the time for people just want to be taken care of, you know, they just want to come. Mm. They just don't want to have to think about where they get their food, learn, but they have everything there ready for them. So we can right. teach them all the principles, the tools, the lifestyle here, you know, the trips and the sacred spots, you know, it's paradise. And why, why did I do this ages ago? Yeah. And then get that um, magic and comfort from the animals, you know, show them the, that is beautiful. and it puts things in perspective as well, I think, you know, sometimes we can't take away what they're feeling and how you suffer your own suffering, mm-hmm. but it does put like, it did help me, you know, when I, when I'm helping the animal, I think sometimes, you know, my little, little pain points or my little like worries that I have is really sometimes not, not as significant, you know, mm-hmm. I dramatize sometimes, yes. you know, and I feel, I think we're all, just we're all sort of, yeah, we're all capable of doing that but I think it definitely does service is is healing it's so self-healing as well and you don't expect it when you sort of start out but it definitely comes back so yeah well this has just been absolutely extraordinary totally surpassed my any expectations I had so thank you so much for spending time with me today and sharing your story so honestly and openly I know that you're a great inspiration not only to me but to everybody on your channel and within your community so thank you very very much i'm i'm very grateful (laughs) this has been wonderful and thank you everybody for watching today Um, if you liked this video please do me a huge favor and like and subscribe and share it with anybody that you know that would um benefit and gain value from from this video as well so thank you so much tony it's been wonderful thank you so much until next time bye for now thank you so much